So in unit 5.5, we're going to look at radical equations. And the first problem asks us, what is the solution of 3 plus the square root of 2x minus 3 equals 8? So what we first need to know is that that radical acts like a pair of parentheses. So what we're going to do is we're going to look to get rid of anything that's on the outside first. Then we'll take care of the radical. Then we'll take care of the stuff that's underneath the radical. So the first, um, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. That leaves us with the square root of 2x minus 3 equals 5. Now we need to eliminate the square root. The opposite of a square root is a square, so square both sides. So then when we, once we get rid of the radical, we are left with 2x minus 3 equals 25. Then, uh, now it's just isolate the variable. So add 3 to both sides, 2x equals 28. Divide by 2, x equals 14. So now what we want to do is we want to check and see if 14 is correct. Just plug that back in for x. Now you've got to do order of operations. So we're going to start underneath the radical. 2 times 14 is 28, minus 3 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5, plus 3 is 8. So 8 equals 8, and you know that you've got the, you, you know that you've got the correct solution. In problem number 2a, we've got a rational exponent that we've got to deal with. So let's take a look at it. It's what is the solution of 3 times the quantity x plus 1 to the 2 thirds equals 12. So the first thing that we want to do, again, is go ahead and work on the outside of the parentheses. So let's get rid of that 3. Divide the 3 out of both sides. You're left with the quantity x plus 1 to the 2 thirds equals 4. Now you've got to take care of the rational exponent. We've got a 2 thirds. So what we want to do is we want to raise both sides to the 3 halves. What we're going to do is we're going to do the reciprocal of this. So when we do, when we raise 2 thirds to the 3 halves, remember that anytime you raise an exponent by an exponent, then you multiply them together. And so the 2 thirds and the 3 halves cancel each other out, and you're going to be left with x plus 1 equals 2 squared to the 3 halves. So that 2 squared to the 3 halves, the 2 2's are going to cancel out. That leaves you with 2 to the 3rd or 8. So now you've got x plus 1 equals 8. Then, because uh, we have now had to use a rational exponent on this, we need to, uh, or because the numerator was even on the rational exponent, then we need to place it in absolute value signs. So we get the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 8. And then remember that whenever you're doing uh, absolute value, you've got to break into two separate uh, into two separate equations. So x plus 1 equals 8 and x plus 1 equals negative 8. That's going to give you x equals 7 and x equals 9. Put both of those back into the original equation to check them and you'll find that both of them are the correct solution. For problem number 2b, we're given what is the solution of 3 times the fifth root of x plus 1 cubed plus 1 equals 25. Now the first step for this one is we're going to take that index of 5 and we're going to move it underneath the exponent in the radicand. So instead of having the fifth root of x plus 1 cubed, we can also make it uh, x plus 1 to the 3 fifths. So our new line is 3 times the quantity x plus 1 to the 3 fifths plus 1 equals 25. Now we've got to isolate the, uh, we've got to isolate that quantity on the left side. So subtract 1 from both sides, then divide by 3, and you're left with the quantity of x plus 1 to the 3 fifths equals 8. Again, since we've got a rational exponent, the way that we're going to get rid of that is to raise it by the reciprocal. And so x plus 1 to the 3 fifths to the 5 thirds. Over on the other side, we're going to take 8, and we're going to take that down to, the, to its smallest base, which is 2 cubed, and then we're going to raise that to the 5 thirds. So the 3 fifths and 5 thirds cancel each other out. You're left with x plus 1, and that's going to be equal to 32, because once we cancel out those 3s, we're left with 2 to the 5th, which is 32. Now, subtract 1, you're, and you're left with x equals 31, and that's your solution.
In problem number three, we've got the word problem for Meteor Crater in Arizona. The formula D equals two cubed root of V over 0.3 relates the diameter of the rim in meters to the volume in cubic meters. What is the volume of Meteor Crater if the diameter is 1.2 kilometers? So we're gonna take any information that we've got and we're gonna plug it into that formula. So the formula is D equals two cubed root of V over 0.3. And then we know that the diameter of the crater is 1.2 kilometers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to change that 1.2 kilometers to meters because we need to know the diameter of the rim in meters. So that 1.2 kilometers becomes 1,200. So plug that in for D. You're left with 1,200 equals 2 cubed root of V over 0.3. Divide out the 2 from both sides to be able to isolate the radical. You've got 600 equals the cubed root of V over 0.3. Now what we're going to do to get rid of that uh, cubed root is to raise it by a cube. So whatever you do to one side, do to the other. 600 cubed is 216 million, and we've eliminated the radical on the right side, so now all we're left with is V over 0.3. Now multiply both sides by 0.3, and you're left with 64,800,000. That is the volume of the meteor crater in Arizona in cubic meters. For problem four, we're asked, what is the solution of the square root of x plus seven minus five equals x? So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look to uh, isolate the radical and then isolate the variable after that. So move the five to the right side. You're left with the square root of x plus seven equals x plus five. Now to get rid of the radical, square both sides. So x plus seven now equals x squared plus 10x plus 25. Because remember when you've got x plus five squared, you've got to go ahead and you've got to go through and you've got to foil that. Now, since we've got a, quadratic, a full quadratic equation on the right side, that means we've got an A term, a B term, and a C term. We need to get everything to one side. So we need to move the x and the seven from the left side to the right. That's gonna leave us with zero equals x squared plus nine x plus 18. Now at this point, you're gonna to look to see, do you have a perfect square, uh, do you have a perfect square trinomial? You're gonna go through all of your factors. And what we find out is that we can factor this down to x plus three times x plus six, which means that our solutions are x equals negative three and x equals negative six. Now what we wanna do is we wanna to check to see if we've got any extraneous solutions. So plug both the negative three and the negative six back into the original equation, work it down, and we see that uh, for negative three, we get a true statement, negative three equals negative three. And for negative six, we get a false statement, negative four does not equal negative six. So this tells us that negative three is a solution, but negative six is not a solution. For problem number five, we've got two radicals in one equation. So whenever you see this, what you wanna do is get one of the radicals to the other side and make sure that the other radical is isolated. So I'm gonna to choose to keep the square root of two X plus one isolated, and I'm gonna move the negative square root of X over to the other side with the one. So once I've done that, I've got square root of two X plus one equals the square root of X plus one. In order to start isolating the variable on the left side, I've got to take the, I've got to square both sides and that the square root and the square are gonna cancel each other out. I'm gonna be left with two X plus one equals X plus two square root of X plus one. Now we've just got a single radical to deal with and that's the one on the right side. So now take everything that, that's not the square root of x, and let's get that moved over to the left side. So subtract x and subtract one. When you do that, you've got, you're left with x equals two square root of x. Now, what we can do here is we can go ahead and in order to make sure that we don't end up with a fraction over on the left side, we can go ahead and square both sides with the two square root of x. That is going to make, that's going to give us an x squared over on the left side the two becomes a four and the square root drops off because the square is going to uh, take care of the square root and you're left with four X on the right side. 
Now you've got an A term and you've got a B term, which means they've, got to, they've both got to be on the same side. So move the 4x to the left side in order to make sure that that A value stays positive. So you've got x squared minus 4x equals 0. And now we can do the GCF. We've got an x in both terms. Take that out. You get x times x minus 4 equals 0. So x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 4. Then you want to go and you want to check the solution. And when you go through and you check the solution, you come out with zero gives you one equals one and four gives you one equals one. So both solutions are solutions to this, uh, to this problem.